So I included this guy in the last video that I shot. Probably not the last video that you saw because who knows if I'm uploading all these in order. But here we are anyway. All right, and this looks an awful lot like a Solomon's bar or a Cobra knot, and it is not. It is uh, tilted slightly. And uh, you may be wondering about that because I am very vocal about being anti-Cobra knot, anti-Solomon's bar. I hate them. I, I hate everything that falls into that family because it's not quick release. And this looks an awful lot like that, so you might have been wondering about that. Uh, let's let's show you the big difference. Let's find the ends. Pull those out. Oh, this is a how-to, by the way. I'm going to be showing you how to do this in the end. All right, so we got the ends out, and you notice that it's uh, going through a loop there. Pull the, undo that one step so that you've got this free loop, and then just tug on it. And it will ratchet itself apart. That is what separates the sidewinder, see, because it's tilted, from a cobra knot. All right, so about how to do these. I'm going to take you all the way back to zero. And so we've got a bow shackle here. I talked about bow shackles in the previous video. And uh, yeah, I'm a little on the fence about bow shackles still. Uh, it's <laughs> That'll be the short version of the previous video that I just shot, but uh, they're standardized, so I'm, I'm using those for this video. All right, now I have this tied in a Zeppelin bend because that is the strongest, smallest knot that I can think of. And the blue line here is very slightly longer than the, than the gray line, so I'm getting the blue part, tossing it up in a cow hitch or a lark's head knot. Very simple concept, kind you can figure out as a kid. And I'm going to take both of the ends and I'm going to put it through the shackle. Pull that straight. This is probably the only how-to video that I've done so far that has not started with uh, with footage of how to do the pattern. I might splice something back in to show you how that's done. I might not. I probably will, actually. I prefer, prefer it when they do that. Okay, so we've got these two ends coming out from underneath like that, and it's sized the way that we want it. Now, I would be a little more careful about measurement right now, but I'm not sizing it for a person, so I'm just like getting it to approximately the diameter that I want. Otherwise, I would have the, the length measured out in advance and on, on my fingers like that, and get that right there and hold that fixed. Okay, pick whichever side you want to lead with. Uh, it doesn't really matter, and pass a bite behind your two lines. Now, the draw right here is from the top. So, right there. So when I pull, so when I pull on this, it draws out at the top. Alright, this guy is going to go through the back right there, and then we're going to tighten backward line down, get that all nice and snug and everything, and then put a bite through the front of that, and wrap it around the back, tighten that down, and you can see the pattern of the sidewinder starting to emerge right there, and uh, now it's all fixed and everything, so I don't have to hold it. I'm going to continue weaving it through there, and that will form the two bars around that side. And you can see how it starts to spiral around. Right there. there and it's really easy once you get started and you learn how to make this to use 
more than two lines for the core that like uh, go around. start here go to this end wrap all the way back and start tying it from this way going down instead of the other way or there's lots of ways that you can go about doing this is, is what I'm trying to say with that it just so happens that these lines are not long enough to make two trips otherwise I would make it a little thicker because it doesn't just make it thicker it makes it tends to make it broader when you add more lines to the core so that's a way that I can get more length out of one of these bracelets without making the bracelet any physically longer Another way would be tying the pattern slightly loose, but then you have to worry about how well the ends compare to one another. All right, every once in a while, uh, I'll notice that it'll get a little loose on one side. You can walk the you can walk the tension up, or just tug and snug every once in a while. Oop, a little too early. There we go. And there. I think I'm going to cut a jump cut to when I'm further along in this. Flash ahead, and so we've gotten it down to just this little bit, and um, if I... This has shown you a couple of the common issues with this. For one thing, I had to give this a tug every once in a while to move the stitches down, because it was loading up on me, if you want to undo that. You can give it a twist or any number of things to uh, even that back out. But we're, we're wound up with uh, a loop here, and it's just barely at the end. And uh, this tail right here is just slightly too long. But uh, we're going to deal with that. All right, so just put it straight through, no loop this time, and tighten that down. And then we're going to flip this guy inside out. There we go. And look at the, uh, at the back side of this. Now, our free tail here comes from that side, and it looks like it's going to lay down nice and even right there. So that's exactly what we're going to do with it, but first we've got to deal with this, this side. I'm going to tuck that under too, because that's all the room we've got for it. And the other reason we're doing that is because this one comes from the side that isn't going to tighten itself down as it goes. As we uh, tug on the gray line, it's going to tighten up the gray side. Blue side doesn't have that problem right now. Alright, that's tugged through. Alright, now we got a little bit of a tassel there. We're going to take care of that at the end. Uh, give myself a little bit of room there. Pop that through. Pull that down first. Under another. Alright, so we're under two. And we got one more left. Now, sometimes I go under three, sometimes I go under two. Um, you only really need to go under two. Okay, so. We got these little tassels right here, and now we're going to walk it backwards. I'm going to start with the gray side, because that'll be the trickiest to deal with anyway. So I added a little bit of slack right here. Now I'm going to pull it out right there. And I'm just going to transfer that down until the slack is below where our free lines are. And it's decently tight where it pins those lines down. There, right there, and one more ought to do it. There we go. Okay, good on the good on the silver side. All right, the blue is a little bit tricky. Get that up to right there. It doesn't have too f terribly far to go. Now we're gonna flip it around. side and then just walk the slack out. We don't have as far to go to walk the slack out on this one. 
because it matters a whole heck of a lot less on this side. There we go. Flip around again to confirm our work. That's that's good and sturdy. It's not not terribly sharp. If it is terribly sharp, you can take like some nail clippers, clip the burr off right there, and uh, then even these up. Make sure it's all snug up to the knot, and the knot is all firm right here. Okay, that looks good. All right, give it a little bit of room on this side, and. There we go, Sidewinder. If you, uh, this is one of those patterns that you can slip, let's say, a couple, uh, twenty, twenty dollars or so, or fifty if you feel like it, uh, along the core lines to uh, make yourself some um, a survival strap with some emergency cash. I just said survival strap, didn't I? That is the competition. Well, no. And the idea to do that came from them anyway, so I might as well credit where credit is due. And uh, if you're going to do that, if you're going to slip some money underneath one of these, you want to make sure that the weaving on it is really tight. Cram as much line on there as possible for your average man's wrist size. Uh, you're going to want about 10 feet, but just to be on the safe side, go 12 and trim as necessary after that. Normally, I am the kind of person who very strongly advocates for measure, cut, and then tie, and then just make it work. But uh, overkill is better than underkill in this case. You could also do a, a multi-core where you've got uh, four lines running through the center instead of two. Right there. Just... Uh, it would start here, come around to this side, double back, and then start weaving on the other side of this knot right here. That's easy enough to do. Okay, I have rambled about this well and truly enough. <laughs> if you found this useful, and almost certainly you did, because chances are pretty good that you tie a cobra knot, and that cobra knot takes forever to untie, and this one does not. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate that again. Uh, go ahead and give me a, a like, give me a uh, share around to friends you know who make paracord bracelets or anything like that. They need to stop using the Solomon's Bar. Or, you know, don't. Like, plan this and, and show off. And then teach them how to do it. Since I was not the one who discovered how to do this, I do not mind whatsoever if you claim to be the one who uh, discovered how to do this, at least for the purposes of wearing your friends. Just real quick, I'm going to show you the uh, what the double around looks like. I'm not going to bother measuring for it. Just, just going to get it done. There we go. This is a little more unwieldy when you've got a much longer line to work with. All right, and then that will consolidate very nicely right there. And you can start with your weaving on the other side of that knot right there. Nice and easy. I'm actually going to go ahead and give that a shot. I'm going to start with. Yeah, you know what? But nah, you go ahead and you figure that one out. Uh. All right. Thank you very much.